-hmm. Praise God, praise God. Sandy school has begun. Praise God. Father God, we just come right now thanking you and praise you for your awesome and mighty power. We come to worship and praise you this morning, Father. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you move in a mighty way. Speak in and through me that your words will be heard and that your words may fall down on good ground to so touch our spiritual hearts, that we may receive your word with joy and gladness. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Today's lesson, today's lesson, freedom from the past. Key verse, well, printed passages, Romans the sixth chapter, verses one through 14. Key verse, if we, I read on the NIV, if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be reunited with him any resurrection like his. A lesson am, explore what it means to live by grace rather than living under the law. Discerning how following Jesus can impact the way you handle temptation and sin. Choose to live in the power of Jesus' life and resurrection. Amen? Amen. Can I get someone to read? Verses 1, 6, Romans 6, verses 1 through 4. You hear that, right? Amen. How can we? So we go sin by grace. How much of us ever take sin lightly? And we always do it so lightly that we say, oh, it's by God's grace. We use it time after time as an excuse to what? Sin. And, it's, and, and that's what, why should we use it for sin by grace? See, God, God said, yeah, we got grace on us. But we know what to continue to continue to sin time after time after time. Because guess what? Sin got what? Consequence. See, see, we, we understand that. Because he said, why should we say then, shall we go on, go on sinning so that grace may increase? No. We, we got to understand that. We, we, we can't do that all the time. Because why? God said, you know, he, he'll, he'll take care of you. We're we going to what? have that consequence, then we wonder why we're going through. Because you sin. You continue sinning, thinking it's by God's grace that you're getting by. You are getting by, by God's grace, but guess what? Sin coming, a consequence coming there. By no means, we are those who have died in sin. How can we live in it any longer? We supposed to what? Hate sin. We don't even supposed to be enjoying sinning. Every time you sin, the number one thing, just, just like who? Uh, David. David was a man after God's own heart. And why he been after God's own heart? Every time David sinned, what he did? He confessed. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for this. Because see, he, he know you've been doing wrong, but then sometimes some people have to tell you. You're doing wrong. And we baby, we baby our children more than we do anything else. We allow them to do so much, oh, they just kids. That's what we say. Oh, they just kids. No, wrong is wrong. And that's how you discipline them. By letting them know wrong is wrong. You got to, guess what? There's consequence behind your 
action. And when you consequence behind your action, guess what? They're going to happen. I'm here to pray for you, to encourage you. I'm going to tell, tell you what's right and what's wrong. Because that's what the word tells us. Because guess what? When you look in the word, guess what? It'll tell you when you what? Sinning. And what does it do? It hurts. You grieve the Holy Spirit when you sin. And you know when you sin because you have that feeling. Who ever have that feeling? When you know you're doing something wrong. That's not a good feeling. You're doing it anyway. And then guess what? You feel more but worse. You're tossing and you're turning. And you're turning and you're tossing. Until you say, Lord, please forgive me. And you could tell people, oh, it was by God's grace that I made it here. But it's by God's grace that I wasn't consumed the other day. Because, see, you, you got to understand, you, th this what happened. And, and we can't indulge it. We can't live it any longer. He said, you will change. Once you give your life to Christ, you have been changed. Now you are a new creature. And... Christ. See, that's the key. In. In Christ. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. Uh, do you not know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of, of the Father, we too may live a new life. We was baptized into Christ. How? See, when we go in that have baptism, it was the watery grave. See, see, that's symbolic of us being baptized like Jesus Christ. We, we, we was walking dead. We, before we even accept Christ, we was the walking dead. Laying on the, we was right there, ready going hell bound, automatically, and we didn't even know. We was, we had, we had I, I put it like this, we was going to hell so fast like a jet fuel on us. Yeah. That we didn't even realize we were going in that fast. Until we accepted Jesus Christ in our life. That put the fire out. You see, and then when we got on the baptism, we got buried in the water. This is why when you say when you got buried, you get baptized. You didn't get baptized in Jerusalem. You didn't get baptized in the pastor name. You get baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then you get dipped. And when you come out, you come out as a new creature and saints spiritually, but you still on this physical body. So that means your mindset should be changed. See, that's the key. Your mindset got to change to be in a new life. It's not about you. Let's turn Philippians in the second chapter. Philippians in the second chapter. You're starting at the fifth verse. Can I get someone to read it when, when they pop it up? Okay, got to get someone to read the fifth chapter up there. <laughs> Second chapter, Philip, the the fifth chapter. You see, it's because it's electless mind being you, which you are also in who? Christ Jesus. This is the NIV. Okay? The NIV. See, we, we back and forth. Okay? See, your mindset. See, see, your mindset got to be just like Jesus. Jesus was what? Resurrected. By who? By the power of God. So in other words, now we have been changed by the power of God. See, the past, see, it's taught to say 
freedom from the past. You got to let go of your past. Too many of us hold back on our past. But you got to what? Let it go. Because, you see, yes, you can have a testimony about what I did in the past, but don't hold on to your past. See, sometimes we got to just let it go. Because, see, your mindset can't be in the past. Your mindset got to be in the future. See, 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 Jesus said, let this mind be in you. Have this relationship just like Christ. Christ gave us life for Christ, for Jesus, for God. He just gave us life. Now we, in turn, re release our life to God. Amen? Amen. Any question? Okay, good, Dan. Let's go to a question. I ask you. I ask you a question. In your life, once you change to Christ, what did you let go? Per se. They say you had a struggle with, per se. Now, that's a question. I asked one of y'all. Okay. Some of the things she used to say, that was Sister Brown said. Some of the things she used to say. Because, you know, we used to say some crazy stuff. Some of the places we used to go. You had to let it go. Some of the people who we used to hang with, oh, we definitely had to let them go. Because, <laughs> see, some, some of the people holding us back. And, see, why are they holding us back? Because, see, if they're not following Christ, why am I with them? Why am I hanging with people that don't even have Christ on their mind? I don't mind sharing with them, being with them for a little while, but I can't hang with them. Now, see, Hanging and being with them is two different things. Okay? See, I could be with you while for a little short journey. But if I'm hanging with you, that means I'm fellowshipping with you, I'm eating with you, I'm going different places with you, I'm doing things with you. But guess what? If you ain't following Christ, why am I really hanging with you? My light got to shine. So all of us hanging together, I'm the only saved person What the crew. What I tell people about me. Even though I might not be doing what they're doing, but the perception, when people look at me, you see, I can't hang around. I can be with you. I can say, hey, how you doing? I'll walk with you for a little while in a basketball game, something like that. I, basketball game. Now, you smoking, drinking, cussing, and I'm hanging with you all the time. What do you think going to happen to me sooner or later? And I got to get what? I was delivered from the past. So why should I go back? Reverse. And see, see, see when, you, when you think about it, you could be a testimony by showing them that I don't have to do that no more. Yeah, they're going to talk about me. They're going to say something about me. But guess what? I'm changed. I am in Christ Jesus. You see, you, see, you got to understand that. Your testimony is the one you got to live for. See, if, you, if, you don't, if your testimony gets damaged, guess what? That's a hard way to get a high, why you say that? Male, female. If this female tells, tell the policeman that fella raped me, who got to defend himself and he didn't even take did it? Who got to work the hardest? Who got to work the hardest? Even when kids lie, you know how your kids lie? I know I lie when I'm a child. Uh, I, I lie on my brother Lamar Nelson that he get the beating for me. All right? I lied for, for myself not to get a beating. Okay? I did it. Oh, I know I did it. But I know I got a brother. I call him my lamb. 
And I used to lie on him like a champ. Because mama would have beat him faster than she would beat me. Because I was a mama boy. And I didn't want my mama boy image to be tarnished. So I used my brother. Amen? Amen. Sister Wine. <laughs> Yeah. And the first thing that came to my mind is the first thing that you would do is give up self. Okay. So you know, we can we can continue to demand in ourselves. Because you know, some of us can be over that. So we can demand in ourselves, then we got we we need to get we got to get in the back. That's right. Because we the pastor. Mm-hmm. Who, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always tell him, I thank him. I love him. I thank him for it. <laughs> so that's it. Can y'all, for, Sister Hampton, you got something to say? You, you're itching? Cause you still in the flesh. You still in the flesh. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Go ahead, sis. And and guess what? It's a process. Everything is a process. When you get someone to say that when they give their life to Christ and everything been new and they did everything perfectly, guess what they just did? Lie.
quit smoking several times before that, and I always went back and bought another pack and I smoked on. And I finally quit smoking three days before Hugo. I had two cigarettes left in the pack, and I remember, I remember watching my daughter and sitting, sitting, sitting on, on, on the den floor, and she had rolled up a brown paper in the form of a cigarette. Today, thank God, I am not only an ex-smoker, I'm repulsed even by the smell of cigarette smoke on somebody's clothes. Now, what it means to be dead to something is that that thing just don't affect you anymore. It, it has no place in you. you. You don't have any desire for it. You don't have any need for it. You don't have any want for it. And that requires a lot from us to get to that point now. Because it took me years before I quit smoking. That's as simple as that is. It, it took years. But when we have that desire, and we, 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 we work at it, and we pray about it, 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 it's not easy, right? It is a process. But you've got to have a desire first. You've got to have that desire. To, to, to be like, to be Christ-like is not just simple saying, I'm going to be Christ-like. It's not just that simple. We've got to do something. We've got to give something. We've got to be something. And in order to get there, it requires work. I don't care how simple it is, what it is, it requires work to be Christ-like. Amen. Now I guess I want to read verses 5 through 9. I know everybody. Romans, the sixth chapter, verses five through nine. We're back in the book. You understand, right? We, we, we die. Like we were saying, that's the process. The process is how much do we surrender to the Holy Spirit? We've been crucified in Christ. Sister Jeanette, what's your favorite verse is? Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Amen. See, we have been crucified by Christ. All right? Every day, it's a dying moment. We, we die to self every day. Besides, we're dying every day anyway. Physically, we are dying anyway. Every day, we at the doorstep of death. Every day. But so that's why, and spiritually, you die. Some things you, you got to die out. It's a process. It, we might have a battle where we're going through. That's why you're human. We are human beings. 
We're not superhumans. We're going to have to do everything through process. They don't say we don't have a time frame. Our time frame is when we close our eyes. Can't breathe no more. Can't see nothing no more. So now when the resurrection is when we resurrected with Christ and our new life. See, when we die, we want to die. We die two times. We die to self when we give our life to Christ. And we never physically die. But guess what? When we physically die, guess what? If you die in Christ, what do you do? You live. That's why death don't have no dominion over him. And death don't have dominion over us. You got to understand that. So sin shouldn't have, we shouldn't be enslaved to sin. Let sin tell us and dictate to us what we should do, what we should say, how we should act. That's why I say your mindset. It's your mindset. You got to be like Christ. Is my mind truly like Jesus Christ? And I'm following just what he said. And all these things, that's what? Well, ease off. Yeah, some of them are going to get taken away quickly. But guess what? If God got something for you, guess what? He could get it out you. If he needs something out you, you don't think the God that we serve can't get it out you. Because why? If he got something for you to do, he'll let you know, I got something personally just for you. Matter of fact, we all got something for Christ. We all sanctify for Christ. We are set apart for a purpose for Christ. See, we supposed to be out here find our purpose, but we got bucket lists. We got bucket lists. What we want to do, everything that we want, and then we interject Jesus when we ready. When we ready for him, oh yeah, I got Jesus. Jesus is the head of my life, and and he gonna do it. No, if he been the head, the first person you talk to. Do you really want me to finish, get this bucket list? Do you really want me to do this? See, son, got a way to twist you. It seems so good. It feels so good. It looks so good. Yeah. Smells so good. But it's sure devastating when you have it. Because why? That's how you do it. Satan do He creep in. Satan stalk you. Let's put y'all, every Christian got a stalker. I'm going to tell you that wrong. Every Christian got a stalker. Because why? Satan roams around. Seeking whom he can destroy. He is a stalker. He checking you out. He checking your pattern. He checking who you like, what you like to do. And guess what? That's how he creep in. He was checking you out. And see, see, and, and, and that's why God said, don't let it be enslave you. Yeah, you're going to stumble. Yeah, we're going to fall. But don't use it as an excuse. And, and that's God saying, don't use it. That's why, see, our problem is the number one word, I. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to stop this. I got to stop that. It ain't about you. It's the Holy Spirit in you that's supposed to be doing the work. So you got to say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. See, the only way you're going to get help is if you ask him. And the Holy Spirit will sit right there and say, go ahead, beat yourself up. I'm going to convict you, but beat yourself up. Keep trying. See how much, how tired you get trying over time after time after time after time. And they never succeed until you say, Holy Spirit, I give up. I need your help. That's why he gave you the Holy Spirit to live in you. We got to learn how to tap into the Holy Spirit and stop doing it on ourselves. Amen? Okay. Question. See, that's about your testimony. Everyone got this one now. The question is, you got a comment? You sure? 
Positive. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead, Dan. He lives, he lives to God. If that was true, that means that Jesus would have to come back and die again. He only died one time for the sins of the whole world. Save, unsaved, just, unjust, uh, 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 smokers, non-smokers. I smoked 25 years, Brother Middleton. And the only way you can get rid of that, you got to turn it over to the Lord. Lord, I need you to take this from me. I was in my house, I'll never forget. I smoke Vantage. And every time I go to the Sunoco, them girls see me coming. You know, we go, he go buy three packs of that. But when I stop, they say, you don't want no cigarette, Mr. Mac? No, ma'am. I quit at the shipyard. Everybody smoke. I mean everybody. My my, my co-worker came up to me one morning, and he smoked Salem. And when he walked up to me, I was reading my Bible right there at the counter. And he said, uh, good morning, Matt. <sighs> Smoke went. I said, thank you, Lord. I'm done. But, but the key point, y'all, the key point, as Jesus Christ died one time. Everybody don't believe that. You got that in God's word as you look at it this morning. Please believe that because you got it. Amen. Now, now, I got a question for, y'all know I always got a question, right? How bold are you in Christ Jesus? How bold are you in Christ Jesus? You got to ask yourself that. Am I really bold for Christ? Yes, we got a lot of them. A lot of them say, yeah, yeah. When the last time have you witnessed for Christ? That's your boldness. Mm -hmm. To those one mm -hmm. who know you, mm -hmm. know you know you. You know what I mean, that know you? That hold your baggage and let you always tell you, I know when you used to. <laughs> you know that word, I, you used to. Used to. Because <laughs> you know there's a, I call them baggage holders. Because anytime you will know what you used to do in the past, let's call them. Because they'll tell you everything. Because yeah. See, they watch every bad thing you do. Yeah. They don't see the good things, but they definitely know your bad things. But how bold are you to go back and stand up for Christ? Now, I know some people, they say, yeah. But if Deacon Dean asks you to come teach about Jesus Christ, your boldness just went up. When the pastor call you to do something up front, oh, that camera right there. I sure scared of that camera. Because there's a lot of people out there. What did you say when you got saved? God, I'll go lead everyone to Christ. There's a perfect opportunity 
Right here. Ain't that right, D? Amen. Amen. Go on, right, next one. Verse number 10. See, D, see, Reverend Mac went to the number 10. He ain't supposed to go to number 10. Okay? But I gotta let him get, I gotta give him a pass for that one. So can I get someone to read verses 10 to 14? Rewind it down. Hold on. Everybody's just, hold on. Everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. Yeah. The death he the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin range in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desire. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. Do you, you know what I mean? That really means it's a matter of life and death. So you got to understand, when, you, when, you, when, when God brings you to a new life, you don't know when, that, when you're going to pass. Every day, everyone got appointed time. So let me ask you a question. When do, are you supposed to die? I'll call you. Nobody knows when you're going to die. So that's why he said, is it, huh? In due time. That due time is what time? I don't know time. Because <laughs> see, see, you got to understand this. Because what? Every day, he gives you a chance to do what? Live for him. Mm -hmm. Every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't bring the past back. Mm -hmm. Yesterday is what? Gone. Tomorrow is not. Gone. So today, you got to try to get it right just the day. So every day, he's, he tried to tell you, don't let sin tell you to do something every day. Now, we're going to sin. Let me put that right there now. There's no one in this room, I'm going to say it for you, that don't sin a day. Because if you don't sin a day, you are one perfect person. And guess, only one perfect person live. So that means each day that, that son, you go, Lord, if you need help, number one thing is, Holy Spirit, help me. If you see yourself doing this over and over and over, and when you get fed up, and the Holy Spirit will tell you, because that feeling will come upon you, you can say, Holy Spirit, I need help. Because I try doing this on my own. And I need your help. And the only way I can get delivered is by you. Because I keep trying and I fail. So, Holy Spirit, I need you. And that's the key. Don't let it have master over you. So when you do it, don't make an excuse. I did it. Lord, forgive me. Be under grace. That's why he said ask for forgiveness. How much time are you supposed to ask for forgiveness? As much as you do it. It's 70 times, 70 times, 70, 70. You can... If you send 400 or something time a day, good Lord, you ain't got time to love. You ain't got time to work. You ain't got time to cook. You ain't got time to share. So you and everybody got, we under grace, why? Every day is a good day. We got a new day every day. And he just tell you live as he brought you from life again. Every day you wake up, it's new life. He renews his compassion on you every day. He doesn't have to do it, but yet he did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And why? And we should be what? Gracious and care and, and loving. Because why? He spares us another time. Another day to just, to, just to give him praise. Another day to just to glorify him. And he said, don't let sin tell you what to do. Don't. Because, see, 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 sin will tell you to do all kinds of crazy stuff. 
He tell you run the red light because you late. <laughs> he tell you catch the driver out. Yeah, he do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, all do this week. I saw. I, I'm getting. I get frustrated at other people. I be looking at them, and then I got to ask myself, Lord, please don't let me get mad again like that. Forgive me for getting mad, cause you know I can't stand when someone I stop and you running the red light and I supposed to be coming out. And you're falling too close behind my bumper. I'm not going anywhere. If you see me on a highway on I-26 and you trying to get somewhere, please get from behind me. Because I'm not doing no more than 65. All right. Okay? I'm going to get in the middle lane. Yeah. You got the right lane. You got the left yeah. lane. Okay? Yeah. You can do anything you feel like, but please don't get close behind me. Because, see, I'm still a work in progress. Okay? I might hit the brakes. <laughs> might, yeah, you know, I don't know. Might have a sword, might throw him out the window. Yeah. Guess what? Because I know where I throw one sword out the window. Guess where you're going back? Mm. I still, it's still in me. Because why? I'm still in this flesh. But see, I'm not going to boast about how bad I used to be. See, see, you holding on to something when you say, man, if y'all meet me in my bad days, or I want to whoop your tail. Yeah. Well, you boasting about your past. Mm -hmm. What are you doing about the future? Yeah. Are you out here listening, listening for Christ? Ah, oh, you just talking about your past so much. You know, I tie, you know, me personally, I, if I know your story, I tie in it. <laughs> Why should I hear about your past? Time after time after time after time. What are you doing in the future for Christ? Mm -hmm. How much souls have you led to Christ? How much ministry have you been in? See, see, you got you to understand, when sin gets you, he try to flip you, turn you, and toss you. He wrap you, tie you, and tangle you up. Why? Because sin got a way to grip you. Amen? Amen. Now, the closing thought. Can I get someone to read the closing thought? Where my mic man at? Comment on the difference or at least the comparison between living under the law and living under grace. The law and grace. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Very simple explanation. Living under the law is where everything that you have done wrong will be pointed out. And living under the grace is where everything that you have been done wrong is where you will be loved. <laughs> grace points to, the law points out your errors. Grace points out that same error, but they show you where it shows you where you love that. Instead of condemning you and sentencing you to death, it teaches you a lesson and helps you to repent so that you can grow inside of grace. Grace Grace is what helps you not to be under law. Grace will not have you robbing anybody. Grace will not have you doing anything that will have you subject to becoming under the law. Grace takes you out of the law and puts you in a place where I don't have these thoughts no more. I don't have these actions anymore. So I ain't got to worry about the police knocking down my door. I ain't got to worry about child support coming at me. I ain't got to worry about nothing about the law because grace has put me in a position where I take care of everything I have to take care of so that I don't have to be subject to the law and come under condemnation or punishment. In other words, put it this way. Law teaches as a schoolmaster. It hold you down, point blank, everything you do, you got to be aligned with the law. Everything. Back in the days, they had so much law that they had to follow all the law. Grace is just God's grace. He have mercy upon you. We living under grace. Why? Because the things that we would have been dying for, that he had said to condemn us, he don't condemn us. He give us life. He give us extra life. He love us so much. His mercy take over. That's why he said we under grace. Because if, if you look at the past, put it this way, in the old days, when they didn't do nothing right, anyone don't do nothing right, what happened to them? Die. God take them out. 
Now, since we got Jesus Christ in our life, we got grace. He's not going to take us out anymore. Amen. You got it? Can I piggyback on that real quick, please? Like, when, um, it's, it's, just, it's a little bit more because, like, today in society, it's not like if we go do something, we're going to get killed. Um, but you will go to jail if you're under the law. And if you're under grace, you will not do anything to put you under the law because you have already learned the lesson. Grace is not like if you go rob a bank, you're not going to jail. No, grace is going to have like, girl, if you go rob that bank, you're going to jail. Don't do it. That's grace. Grace shows you how to think in Christ, how to think like Christ. Christ is not going to do anything that will have him subject to the law because there is no law that can come against love, which is what grace is. So if you're living in grace, you're living under grace, you're not going to do anything outside of love to have you become subject to the law, if that makes any sense. Amen. All right, closing thought. Each of us has been empowered by God to bear witness of his glorious gospel in others. Your, your unique story of deliverance is personal and unique. You are the only one who can tell the story of how God has set you free. Like, use this moment of reflection and God's grace to reclaim your seat of authority and share your story of deliverance. Amen. And the closing prayer, dear Lord, together we gather as a Baptist believers in Christ. We are all partaker of the Lord's saving grace. Equip and empower us to boldly proclaim your, free, your freeing power to the world in our words and in our action. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank you, thank you, 